Genesis chapter 24. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And Abraham was old. I can identify with that. And well stricken in age. Brother Ed can identify with that. I won't say which one. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of the house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swear to him concerning the matter. And the servant took ten cam camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hands. And he rose and he went unto Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. Now look with me down to verse 61. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, which followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah. And went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Lahoroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes, and he saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walkest? in the field to meet us. And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into, her mother Sarah, into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good choir singing, the good special singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for a good report of good jail services. Thank you for being a good God. Now, God, you know what we stand in need of. Speak to every heart. Glorify your name's sake. Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus that we ask these things. Amen. Amen. We find in Genesis chapter number 24 the literal account of when Abraham sent his servant to find a bride for his son Isaac. We find all the details laid out in this chapter. It's a long chapter, didn't go through all of it, but we find the details. But can I say that in this chapter we find the servant is sent in verse number 2. And we find that he's seeking a bride uh, for his, uh, the master's son in verse number 4. Uh, we find submission from the bride, Rebecca, to a promise in verse 58. The Bible says, And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Uh, she submitted to a promise. Uh, then we see uh, the scene of Isaac in verse 64. Uh, and Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, uh, she lighted off the camel. Uh, 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 we see these things transpire in this chapter. Uh, 
But there's more going on in this chapter than what meets the eye. Uh, there's a lot of symbolism in this chapter. Uh, uh, Abraham in this chapter is also a picture uh, of God the Father. Uh, the servant in this uh, chapter is a picture uh, of God the Holy Spirit. Uh, and we find uh, Isaac in the chapter, uh, the son, uh, is a picture of Jesus, uh, the Son of God. Uh, we find uh, that the Father uh, sent the servant, the Holy Ghost, uh, into this world uh, seeking a bride uh, for his son, Jesus. Uh, 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 hey, uh, the bride was paid for by Jesus, uh, but the Spirit seeketh uh, those that will receive the promise just like Rebecca does. Uh, 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 and so when they say, will you follow this man? Uh, and she said, I will. Uh, hey, I don't know about you, uh, but I remember when the Holy Spirit came by my way. Uh, I didn't understand all that was going on. Uh, but when the invitation was given, uh, would I follow after Jesus? Uh, hey, that night I did, uh, and it changed my life forever. Uh, we find that Rebecca is a picture of the bride of Christ. Uh, now, uh, now I want you to look in verse number 10. Uh, verse number 10 says this. Uh, 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 let me get there. I'm still over in the other chapter. Uh, 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 verb, other page. Verse number 10 says this. Uh, and the servant uh, took ten camels uh, of the camels of his master and departed. Uh, look at verse 61. And Rebekah arose uh, and her damsels, uh, and they rode uh, upon uh, camels. Uh, Look at verse 63. Uh, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field uh, at the eventide, uh, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, uh, the camels uh, were coming. Uh, in verse number 10, we find there are 10 uh, camels. Uh, uh, there is a study in the Bible called numerology. Uh, all the numbers in the Bible mean something. Uh, and the number 10 uh, uh, means Gentiles. Uh, aren't you glad uh, God made a way in the bride of Christ uh, for Gentiles? Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, that he came unto his own uh, and his own received him not? Uh, but as many as would receive him, uh, to them gave he power to become uh, the sons of God. Uh, I'm glad God made a way. Uh, Israel's the true vine of God, uh, but he grafted in the vine. Uh, 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 he grafted in a branch in the vine. Uh, that branch is the church or the bride. Uh, and he made way uh, uh, where every old Gentile dog from every tongue, people, and kindred uh, could be born again, saved from their sins, uh, and uh, be made part of the family of God in the bride of Christ. Uh, can I say tens the number of Gentiles? Ten camels, the Gentiles grafted into the bride. But in verse number 63, we see that Isaac's in the field, and he looks up, and behold, the camels were coming. Can I say they tell me that folks would travel in those days in caravans. It was more safe to do so. And even if you wasn't a wealthy person uh, and you had to travel from one location to another, you'd find a caravan headed that way and you'd join yourself that way uh, uh, to keep yourself uh, safe from marauders. Uh, but they tell me, uh, 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 Brother Bob, that uh, uh, those camels riding on them sand dunes and them deserts going up and down and up and down, uh, 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 it looked like ships being tossed in the waves of the sea uh, going up and down. Uh, and they would call caravans uh, the ship uh, of the desert. Uh, can I say uh, that uh, uh, the church has often been pictured uh, as a ship. Uh, uh, we find in uh, 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 the Bible that Noah uh, was commanded to build an ark, uh, uh, a ship if you would, uh, and Noah built the ark, uh, and God gave him the uh, dimensions to build it, told him how to build it, uh, gave him the opportunity to build it, uh, 
Noah preach righteousness while he was building it uh, and uh, uh, God sent the Amorals in uh, and God told Noah and his family to get in uh, and God shut the door and it began to rain for 40 days and 40 nights uh, and God busted up the deep of the earth uh, and the water was flowing up and the water was flowing down uh, and God's judgment came upon this whole world uh, but Noah and those in the ark were safe uh, and they sailed safe safely uh, until it landed. Uh, listen, uh, I'm glad I'm in the ark, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm glad he's the door. Uh, no man can open the door unless God opens it. No man can shut it unless God shuts it. Uh, I'm just glad I'm in. Uh, one day he's going to shut the door off for the grace age uh, and he's taking this ship home uh, and we're going to the other side. What a blessing. What a blessing. Uh, in Acts chapter 27, uh, we find the Apostle Paul. Uh, he's on a ship uh, in a terrible storm. Uh, one of them storms, they named it uh, Euclidon. Uh, and there are some called Eurocladin. Uh, all I know is it was a big old bad storm. Uh, and they were throwing everything off the ship uh, to light the ship. Uh, but uh, Paul had done a little business with God uh, down in the belly of that ship. Uh, and he said, sirs, be a good cheer. Uh, uh, this night the Lord has sent his angel. Uh, hey, uh, Paul said, uh, no one's going to be uh, uh, lost to the ship. Uh, they thought he was crazy. Uh, but Paul said, when some tried to get off the ship, uh, except you abide in the ship, uh, you cannot be saved. Uh, I'm glad I'm in the ship. Uh, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm not trying to get out of the ship. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, for the ship of God. Uh, I want to preach on this thought for a minute this morning. I want to preach on this ship's about to sail. Uh, this ship's about to sail, friend. You look around this old crazy world, if you can't sense something's up... Uh, even the lost world knows something's up, uh, something's awry. Uh, I'm, they're starting to figure out that people are trying uh, uh, to supersede uh, uh, people's uh, uh, food supplies uh, and health supplies. Uh, they're lying. Uh, hey, uh, 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 every politician there in Washington doesn't care about you. They don't care about me. Uh, they only care about themselves and lying in their own pockets. Uh, uh, they can catch people right, uh, 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 red-handed and, uh, and they don't prosecute them. Uh, you and I, uh, if we blink wrong, they're ready to throw us off uh, into jail and lock us up and throw away the key. Uh, I'm telling you, this thing's gone crazy. Uh, they're calling that which is good evil and that which is evil good. Uh, perilous times have come. Uh, I'm just telling you, this ship's about to sail. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you in the ship? Because she's about to sail. Can I say, first of all, in lieu of the fact the ship's about to sail, you need to heed the call. Uh, you say, what call? The captain's saying, all aboard. Uh, I'm saying, all aboard. Uh, hey, uh, you don't have much more time. Uh, this thing's about to sail. You better get on board. Next month, we're taking Ella Rose, Ella Rose on her first cruise. We booked it when she was in Taya's belly, when we was on our last cruise. Uh, you say, what are you going to do with her on a cruise ship? Whatever she wants to do, which I think it's going to be visit the ice cream machine often. Uh, but I'll never forget the first cruise I ever went on because I always said, I was like some of you all, Miss Jackie. So I'd never get on a boat. Uh, I'll never get on a boat, get out there, and if something goes wrong, you can't get to land. And, you know, too many people live their lives in the ifs. Uh, I was one of them. And I've heard people say, well, what would I do on that boat? Them boats are floating cities. You find all kinds of things there. But I'll never forget. Brother Rod and Miss Lynn, when I married them, their, their gift to me for marrying them, they paid for me to go on a cruise. It was kind of weird. It was their honeymoon. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Uh, but they paid for it. So Annette and I went on our first cruise. 
I fell in love with it. But I'll never forget, whatever travel agent he used was smoking crack because it was in December and they had us flying to Detroit to fly to Miami. We get to Detroit, guess what? Snowstorm. We can't get out of Detroit. We finally get there. We get to the airport. They're telling us, you all got to get on the shuttle. The boat's about to leave. Uh, just leave your luggage. We'll pick it up, and you can get it at the next port. Now, I've never been on one of these boats, but I ain't going nowhere without my toothbrush. You know, I can wear underwear for about four days, but I can't do it without my toothbrush. You know what I mean? Yeah. Huh? Huh? And you ask him. There was, how many we have in the party? 30? About, what, 31? And they're all rushing the shuttle. I said, I'm not leaving without my luggage. They said, the boat's about to leave. Well, the boat can leave without me, but I'm not leaving without my luggage. I said, what happened? They got us our luggage. We get on the shuttle. They get us to the boat. As we get to the boat, they're saying, just come on. Don't, don't worry about anything. You know, we're supposed to go through and make sure you don't have anything in your luggage and you're supposed to go through all these protocols. Forget the protocols. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. And as we're getting on the boat, they're pulling up the gangplank. I'm telling you, that's how close it was. We get on the boat, and that big horn sounded on that boat. Oh, it was all on board. What I'm telling you, the trumpet's about to sound. The gangplank's about to be pulled up. Hey, the call is going forth. You need to get on board. If you're not on board, you better get saved today. This ship's about to sail. Can I say this? The course is set. It's set. Everything's charted out. I don't have to worry about storms. I don't have to worry about low currents. I don't have to worry about everything. I know the destination of where the ship's going. Uh, she's going to land in the port of glory. Are you listening? Uh, hey, the course is set. Uh, the captain knows the way. Uh, hey, he's going to take us safely to the other side. Huh? There's one thing amazing about them cruise ships. As soon as I get on, I don't have to worry about where I'm going. Matter of fact, you asked me where, where we're going next month. I couldn't tell you. I think we're going to Honduras one time. I don't know where we're going. Don't care because I'm going to be on board. Are you listening? Uh, the captain knows where to take me. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to go wring my hands, go up to the captain's uh, bridge and say, Y'all, you, you sure you know where you're going? I, I don't need to be a backseat driver. I don't need to tell them when to break, when to turn, when to do all that, when to park that thing, how to park that thing. Hey, the captain, he's been doing this uh, uh, for years. He knows what he's uh, doing. Uh, I'm here to tell you, the captain of the old ship of Zion, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus, the bishop of our souls, uh, he knows the way to take. Uh, we just need to trust the captain my dear friends uh, the course is set the ship's about to sail uh, lou that can I say this the current is right I've seen some of them get on them cruise ships and they hit some bad storms and you see the water sloshing out of the swimming pools and water running across the decks and, and everything I'm thinking boy that would have been a nasty cruise to be on can I help you something? The current's just right. The current we're going to sail on is going to be fine. We're not going to hit any bumps. But can I say the current around here is just right for the ship to sail? Huh? Huh? It might be the providential hand of God that it's been below zero wind chill for the last few days and Brother Adrian and Brother Jordan and I are going to Florida. That might be in the will of God. The current will be right. Huh? But can I say the current of society the current of religion the current of the wars and rumors of wars the current of earthquakes in diverse places the current of all these terrible storms uh, happening in weird spots uh, all these things just didn't happen. Uh, the current uh, of uh, 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 the woman using uh, the loss of her natural affection. Uh, uh, the current of uh, men with men and women with women. Uh, all the things outlined in Romans chapter number 1. I'm telling you, the current is ready. Right. 
This society is so warped and so messed up, they don't even know what bathroom to go in anymore. Yeah. Huh? Miss Ned had some show on last night. It was called Strange Addictions. There's some strange folks. This one gal, her addiction, she ate the foam out of couch cushions. And she wondered why she had stomach problems. Because you're a nut. Huh? Who says, huh? This couch cushion's pretty pretty comfortable on my rear end. I think I'm going to open it up and eat it. <laughs> Who does that? I'm telling you, we're living in a cuckoo for Cocoa Puff society. Well, if that was bad, the next person was one of these they call furry. She dressed up in costumes all the time, insomuch that she wouldn't undress in a costume. She always had a stupid head on, walking around like a mascot somewhere, and thought that was normal. Her own mother said, it isn't normal. It is to me. Nut job. Huh? Showed her bowling with one of these things on. I'm thinking, how in the world can you even see out of this stupid thing? Huh? I'm just telling you, there are people that have lost all sense of reality. And you realize the Bible makes it clear that in the last days, that kind of stuff's going to go on? People have lost common sense. You say, what's happening? I'm telling you, the current's right. This ship's about to sail. Hmm? Huh? Let me help you something. Everything that has to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. For Jesus to take his church out of here. Huh? Do you realize that the parable of the fig tree, the Lord said, This generation shall not pass away till these things come to pass? What's he talking about? He's talking about when Israel would become a nation, 1948, that that generation wouldn't pass away till the second coming of the Lord. Now, can I say most people leave a generation was 40 years, but the Lord expanded it to 70, and beyond that, you're blessed. Well, we're beyond 70. But do you, do you realize this? The church is out of here seven years before the Lord literally comes back. You say, what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, this ship's about to sail. There's not more, much more time. You say, preacher, you set a date. No man knows the day or the hour. No, I'm not setting a date. I'm just looking at the current. And I'm telling you, it's right. This ship's about to sail. Uh, and I say, not only... Should you heed the call? Not only is the course set, the current's right. But let me say this. Crew, make your final check. Amen. Long before one of them boats pull out, of, pull out of port, the captain makes sure everybody is at their stations and they've checked everything and double-checked it and everything is right. They don't set them cruise ships out without food. Hmm? They make certain all the cabins are clean and everything's just right. They make certain everything's in order before she sets sail. Well, you and I are the crew. It's time for us to make, make, make a checkup. Uh, I'm glad I'm on board. But am I ready to meet the master? Uh, have I got my room cleaned? No. Uh, is my vessel clean? Am I where the Lord would have me? It's time to do a final check, friend, because this thing's about to sail. Hmm? Uh, you see, here's our problem, Brother Tony. We know the Lord's coming back. We just don't believe He's coming back today. But He could. Uh, I'd just soon go to heaven as to Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm telling you. In lieu of the fact this ship's about to sail, crew, you better make your final check. Thought about this. This thing's about to sail. You better cut loose the tie downs. See, all them cruise ships have these big, gigantic ropes, and they put them around these uh, 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 big turnstile things uh, on the port that's into the concrete. And they got them things tied up to them things. And then when it's time to go, they cut the ropes. They set them loose. What I'm saying, some of you got too many ties in the world. You need to cut them loose. This ship's about to sail. Uh, you're too interested in things going around that's temporal. 
You better be more concerned about things that are eternal. You need to cut loose the ties. This ship's about to sail. And then let me say this. This ship's about to sail. Lou, that we better listen for the command to leave. Uh, Revelation 4, 1, the Bible says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. You ever heard a trumpet talk? If you're saved, you will. Uh, it's a voice, but it sounds as a trumpet that talks. huh? And what does the trumpet say? Which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. What's, what are we going to hear when the trumpet blows? Come up hither. Are you listening? Are you listening for the command to leave? Huh? When the Lord says, he's not even going to get the whole sentence out. As soon as he says, come, I'm out of here. Huh? Huh? First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 4, you know the verses. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This ship's about to sail. Are you on board? So I'm at church. Well, I didn't ask you that. See, the only way you get on board the ships, you've got to go through the door of the ship, and his name is Jesus. You must be born again. Are you saved? Do you know that you know that you know that you're saved? Say, so, well, my grandma, no. Well, my mom, no. Do you know that you're saved? Can you go back to a place where you called on the Lord and he saved you and changed your life? If not, I'd get on board today. Say, preacher, I know I'm saved. That's a blessing. Are you ready to go? Because this thing's about to sail. Said all that to say this thing's about to sail. Now, Brother Ray, some of us have been on this ship for a long time. It amazes me that every cruise, they'll, they'll point out people that they've cruised 30 and 40 weeks in a row. I don't know how in the world you do that. I mean, I like eating buffets, but I can't do it 30 weeks in a row. Oh. Well, but just being on there a week, you get off, your legs are a little wobbly. I imagine you've been on there that long, they've got to wheel you off. Huh? But listen, if you've been on the boat that long, there are times you get weary, I'm sure. Because not every trip is smooth sailing. Not every trip is a wonderful experience. And friend, you've been on the ship a long time. You've faced some hardship. You've faced some unpleasant things. You've faced some things that caused some heartaches. In that same chapter, in chapter 24, that servant gave all kinds of jewels and garments and precious things to Rebecca's brother and mother. And then they got on the camels and lighted off. Now, I don't know how long it took them to get to Isaac, but I know more than 10 minutes on a camel, that's a terrible trip. And Brother Eric, they're in a desert. They're not riding a camel at Disney World. They're in the desert. Deserts are hot. They're miserable. You get sandstorms, sand blowing in your face. I don't know, somewhere along the line, there's probably a camel in front of you. Camel smell doesn't appeal to me. You're smelling camel. You're getting hit in the face with sand. It's hot that your sweat is sweating. And I imagine somewhere along the line, Rebecca's starting to second think this thing. She's starting to rethink what's going on here. I've never met this man. How do I even know this man will love me? All I'm doing is I'm taking the word of this servant for it. It's hot. It's miserable. And right about now, she's probably missing mama's house. About that time, the servant looks back and sees her struggling. I can just see him slowing up his camel, pulling up next to Rebecca, reaching in the pocket, pulling out some of them jewels. Here's the jewels. 
And she got another glimpse of what was waiting for her. And that servant says, oh, this is nothing compared to what my master has in store for you. And oh, how he's going to love you because God sent you and you're the one for him. And he reassured her. You know what sometimes coming to church is just reassurance? The Lord just show us a little nugget, a little jewel. The Lord just comfort us in the midst of our Tri tragedies and heartaches and sorrows the Lord just reminded us uh, there's a brighter day coming and one of these days uh, it's going to be worth it all Amen. Ren you've been on the ship a long time just hang in there this thing's about to sail and when we dock in port on the other side it truly will be worth it all when we see Jesus are you on board? You can be. If you're on board, are you ready to meet Jesus? Because it could be just over the next little wave. There he is. Are you ready? The ship's about to sail. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you're not born again, why don't you come? We'll get somebody to show, take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You need to get on board. If you're not on board, the Lord's coming. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the hope we have in Christ. Lord, we know you're coming. We don't know when. We know you're coming. Help us to be ready. Lord, thank you for the church. Thank you for the place you put us in to get ready to when we get to see you as you are. Now speak to hearts, Father. If there's somebody here not saved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. God, for that one that may be saved but struggling, I pray you'd strengthen them. That one that may be in a valley, I pray you'd lift them up, help them to know we're just about home. Lord, just do something for somebody here today. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.